I don't know. <laughs> oh, he is not all that rare and unusual. Well, I guess it's unusual, but it's not all that rare. Oh, I'm sorry. It is Ohi. Um, so yeah, this is basically just a really nice list of, of plants that people might be interested in um, as far as the native plants go. So I just want to give you as much access as I can to list the native plants, and there you go. Moving on to the next hyperlink. Hey, here's an idea. Biodiesel. Why is this a good idea? Well, they're handing out grant money for it, first of all. Second of all, you can actually grow biofuel type plants um, on, on your land. Because a lot of these will grow pretty much anywhere. So you can get the, uh, the types that are kind of creeping types uh, that they will press for oils and stuff. And maybe if you have 25 acres or 20 acres or something and you went out and did 10 acres of biofuel, you may want to do some research to find out what is the potential to make money on that 10 acres? Um, you might have an organization that might want to come in to your land, plant biofuels for you on your land, and then harvest them for you, and then pay you for that service. I don't know the legality with the DHHL and all that, but uh, if I was to play some kind of game like that, it would be somebody else doing it for me, but using my land. So think about biodiesels. Um, well, they would only go to land that's already been cleared and ready to prep. Uh, they're not going to pay for that. But um, available land for production, um, if you don't want to use your land, acquiring other land, I don't see a problem with that with your business plan. So um, if this is something that you want to do, here's a list of potential crops for oil production. Okay. Here's some more ideas use them. Moving on. Okay. Biofuels, great idea. Why? Because you could actually <laughs> get a grant and then make money on the back. What does that say? Growing cover crop seed as a new farmer enterprise. This is a killer article. I love this article because this really, really um, hits a nerve for me. There is so much potential for cover crop sales in Hawaii. Every farmer wants to use them. Every farmer wants perennial peanut. They don't know where to get it. Maybe you should either A, become a cover crop seed distributor, where you don't actually even need to use your land, and all you need to do is import stuff. Uh, but more potential for profit is to grow your own cover crops. So if you grow out two acres of sun hemp for seed, and then you harvest that properly, you can cover over 2,000 acres with the amount of seed that you can, you can get off two acres. So if you do it properly and you do it for seed, you can actually make a ton of money. The question is, are you able to move a lot of these cover crops to seed? A lot of them have an issue with um, the light cycle, and they actually don't go to seed in Hawaii. So cover crops, <clears throat> perennial peanut, oats, alfalfa, you guys saw those alfalfa people? Chances are that those acreage that they used was cover cropping. Because alfalfa is a great cover crop. And then when you're done, you harvest it. And then you can sell it. So please, I beg of you, one, bu one person in the next business pl plan class, do a cover crop business, seed business. Oh my god. Do the data. Put the numbers together. I swear to you, you're looking at some major potential for profit. Okay. If I was to start a business right now, that would be it. Cover crops. I don't know if I'd grow them, but I would definitely uh, import them. Based on the uh, peanut size, are we, aren't we limited to grow in Hawaii, the state of Hawaii? We can grow only so much um, peanuts. Well, okay, perennial peanut is not peanut. A yeah, perennial peanut is, um, it's, it does make a nut. It's not necessarily harvested. It's a different species than what you're thinking. Um, crop peanut is different than perennial peanut. Perennial peanut is more of a creeping uh, cover crop legume that provides uh, nitrogen fixation for plants. Okay, so just a little bit different crop. Okay. Do, 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 do. 
do do cover crops received. Okay. Hey, look, another uh, article on cover crops and green manures. Um, I just wanted to show you because it's a list of cover crops. Pigeon pea, great one. Lab lab, ooh, that one is great. Why? Because it's creeping kind of like a uh, um, sweet potato. It's got big leaves. And what it does is it just covers out and shades out the entire area. And it's creeping, so if you can plant it next to sun hemp, which is a vertical apical plant, it'll actually crawl up the sun hemp. So you can have nitrogen fixation by the sun hemp, and then you have ground cover by the lab lab. You grow them, you grow them right next to each other in the same patch. So just giving you a list of legumes, non-legumes, green manures. Write a business plan on that. You'll make a ton of money. OK, what's this one? Obtaining seeds uh, and plants for conservation. Oh, OK. Hey, look at this. CTAR has already written up a write-up on how to acquire cover crop seeds. That's what this is. And in the back, it has a list of commercial seed sources in Hawaii. These are the only people that sell seeds in Hawaii. Why not get in on this market? Seeds, huge market. If you're selling crop seeds, if you're selling cover crop seeds, if you're selling fruit tree seeds, whatever it is, seeds, seeds, seeds. You can make a ton of money off that. And you can, in your hand, you could hold like $20 in your hand. Like a bag of seeds, $20, depending on what it is. You could hold that tangibly in your hand. How much is $20 worth of sweet potato you know, on the wholesale market? You know, it's a huge thing. So we're talking about size as well. And shelf life, right? Seeds go right in the fridge. You can last till next season. Why wouldn't you sell those instead of the crops? Okay. Did I just do this one? I think I just did that one. Yeah. What do we got on this one? Tarot. <laughs> There's plenty of money to be made in tarot, especially if you process it in the boy. Um, pretty intense as far as labor goes. Uh, insects, disease is an issue, but if you know what you're doing, you can make a decent amount of money. Now, the fact that you guys don't have that much soil um, it certainly is an issue. But guys like Gerald and stuff, up, he's got a place up in Honamu. Um, you know, I don't know what your situation is. Um, I just put it out there, and it certainly raised some eyebrows for some people. Okay? So everybody understands the potential for taro. It's, there's plenty of money to be made. There's always going to be a market for tarot in Hawaii. Um, what's this one? The Knowledge Master. Knowledge Master is a great um, extension kind of uh, program that was set up many, many, many years ago, obviously. And it talks about crop information, um, published reports. I mean, it's literally the database for the CTAR reports. Uh, and I'll show you another link that has a list uh, probably on the next one. But this is basically a place that you're going to go and you can go to animal science crop information. So if I select crop information, I can get information on ornamentals or specialty crops. Specialty crops are usually anything that's not a commodity crop like soy or corn. So um, like herbs. Hey, look at this. There's write-ups uh, by CTAR I've done on oregano. Um, and so it's just a great place uh, to identify pests. Usually sucking type pests will go on oregano. So by knowing that, you'll know what kind of steps to take. Um, but this is just a great database that I want to show you to give you an idea of um, what types of crops are grown in Hawaii. Okay, this is a great uh, link to sources. This is uh, links to Agriculture Diagnostic Service Center, Cooperative Extension Services. Pretty much, if you have a question about anything on agriculture in Hawaii, you can go to this website and then click on any one of these links to find your way around. The best way, I would say, to get involved in understanding a market say you want to do macadamia nuts, would be to say, contact the Hawaii Macadamia Nut Association 
which is right there. And then, um, oops, I guess they don't have a website anymore. But they do still do exist. So if you didn't know that there is an organized organization of, uh, of farmers that grow Mac nuts, they probably have some very current data that you can reference for your business plan. So maybe contact them and let them know that you're interested in getting involved in Mac nuts, uh, where your property is. And these people are there. This is just usually a volunteer organization. These people are there to help you. Um, they're there to help answer questions. And they want to help you get involved in the market. So um, Organic Farmers Association, HOFA. HOFA on their website has a really great um, section where I don't know where it is. I don't want to get into it because it's not part of my curriculum. But you can actually search for crop types uh, and then find out which organic farmers are growing which crop types. So say uh, tarragon is something that uh, you want to grow. You can actually search on there for tarragon farmers that are listed under the organic farmers list. And then uh, those farms, and you can contact them and be like, hey, you got any advice as far as tarragon goes? And these people, these are organic farmers, man. These people will take your call, and they will, they will give you all the information you need, nine times out of 10. So when you're doing your market research data, this is the type of things you want to do. You want to get out into the market and actually talk one-on-one -on -one with people that are playing the game. Okay. All right. I teach this um, when I do the twelve-week business plan course that I do for, for most uh, other sections of the island, except for you guys. I'm doing a condensed version. Uh, I actually do an entire day where I go over this. Write up. This is a write up done by Craig Elevich, Nicole Millen from the Kohala Center, and Jim Kane. He's a tarot farmer on my field. Um, and they wrote an incredible manual for the Hawaiian markets uh, that local farmers can get into. I'm just going to show you the table of contents and maybe just flip through a second, but it really just talks about the types of markets that exist in Hawaii wholesale, farmers markets, distribution. Estimating um, the consumption of major crops. I'll flip down to this. It'll give you a good idea of uh, what types of crops are consumed in Hawaii and um, how many farms grow these products, and you can kind of fill the gap. Um, crops in high demand from local buyers. Section in there that talks about, talks about caterers and chefs and um, produce buyers the types of crops that they're looking for. They're, they literally talk about that there. We need apricots. We need, um, you know, we need just regular red potatoes. Um, if you can grow red potatoes, oh my god, you can make a ton of money. But you wouldn't know that until you read that section. And there's literally four chefs going, we need red potatoes. And nobody's meeting that market for them. So maybe take a look at that. Uh, also talks about key concepts or um, as far as Finding and retaining markets. What can you do to retain a market before you plant? Well, you do market research and find the right product, right? Uh, after planting, can you market your product correctly? Can you sell it as a unique product? Um, general business practices that are done, well, let's get certified organic, and maybe that'll help market my product or whatever. Um, resources for farmers, it talks about uh, places to get education and training, extension service connections, and what programs are out there for state and county. Um, and what uh, private and non-for-profit initiatives are out there for local farmers. It talks about marketing opportunities uh, as far as major distributors and large supermarkets. Can you get in with Armstrong Produce and make some money or could you get in with Safeway? Um, you know, it talks about how to get in that. It talks about uh, contact information of every single person they interviewed in this thing so that, and all these people volunteered to put their name in there so that when you read this, you can then call them and ask them. They will take your call. Just let them know that you're referencing the, the accessing the markets manual and that um, you like what they said about red potatoes and you want to see kind of like what is, is it still currently your interest? Or maybe you have a new, they have a new product that they really want. The, the best thing would be to talk to a chef and be like, in two years, what do you want? And he tells you, oh, well, in two years, da 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 da, we're making this change or we want to go a little bit more local or whatever. We want to go towards local beef in the next two years. Um, and then maybe that's something you want to work with. OK? So please read this manual. It's like 80 pages of awesomeness.
I, I, I swear. That's why I spend a whole day doing this. So here's the consumption. Check this out, apples. Look at how many apples we eat. Total pounds, two million pounds. How much of it is produced in Hawaii? None of it. Consumption, pounds per person. 10 pounds of apples per person in Hawaii, and none of it is grown here. So you're probably not able to grow apples where you're at. Yeah, there's, it's a temperature issue. But here's a whole list of things. There's probably something on here that you can grow. Well, I mean, why not? Yeah, they're starting to grow Fuji apples. They are. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Fujis. So please take a look at this manual. Specifically look at page 15. Got it? Look at watercress. 99%, all of it is consumed in Hawaii. You know where most of that is grown? Pearl City. Pearl City grows most of the watercress. Yeah, there's a little bit there, but most of it that's consumed um, is produced right outside um, in Pearl City. So, there you go. That farmer's got a really good situation where he gets free, cleaned, runoff water. It's been processed and cleaned, paid for by the, by the state. Um, it's an experiment. Yeah, right. He's making a ton of money. All right. Resource management. Where are you going to get your genetics? Well, CTAR has a uh, seed service. Okay, They really pr produce seeds for crops that are, have a high market. Um, not necessarily. It's usually going to be a flooded market. So you got to be careful when you get your seeds from them. Most of the seeds that they produce are for a flooded market. They grow, they do corn and soy and beans, uh, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, uh, lots of lettuce, different kinds of lettuce, manoas, and, and all that stuff. So get a hold of CTAR. They actually sell their seeds. Um, and why would you buy your seeds from CTAR? Well, they've been bred specifically for the Hawaiian envir environment. Are they like GMO? No. Just, just bred out to be um, perfect for Hawaii. The papayas, GMO. The rest of it, no. I think a couple of the tomatoes, but most of the tomatoes are just, they're bred out. So especially with tomatoes, it comes down to, in Hawaii, um, you know, to, have, to grow a tomato that's not bred for Hawaii, is, it can be kind of difficult to, to sustain that plant. Usually they'll get one good harvest, but to get um, consistent growth off of it is pretty difficult. As most people who plant tomatoes and they buy the burpee seeds uh, from the store, they realize they very quickly that they don't do well. So, <clears throat> radishes, peppers, all that good stuff. So if you want to get into the hot pepper market, maybe you want to get a hold of CTAR. Okay? Uh, they have a whole menu as far as this, this, what the seeds cost, and then you can go to this website and check out what is up, um, the newest things that are like out of stock and that kind of stuff. So they have bull bean, cucumber hybrids. Got it? You could actually buy these at a garden exchange. They have them over there. Nice little rack for UH seeds. <coughs> this is where I get my seeds from. Disclaimer, I'm pretty good at growing stuff. So um, most of the stuff that I, that I grow, uh, is a, I do as a challenge for me. So I'll get uh, heirloom seeds from all over the world, and I'll try to grow them in a Hawaiian tropical environment, which nine times out of 10 doesn't work all that well. But when you find a good one, oh man, does it do well. I got some wonderful um, uh, is it stars and moon um, watermelon from these guys that just thrives like crazy up at my house. Um, wonderful tomatoes and peppers that do really well. Seed Savers Exchange was founded in 1975. It was a non-profit organization that basically brought people together who had heirloom seeds. Definition of heirloom means that they're, it's at least 150 years old, and you can prove that by a story, and you can prove that with a name and a place. So if you have an heirloom tomato and you want to actually sell it to Seed Savers Exchange or at least have them um, sell it out for you and distribute it for you, you actually have to have records of who brought it from what country, uh, what boat was it on, um, you know, and that kind of thing. So it's pretty specific as to uh, the genetics on these. And that's why you pay a pretty penny for these seeds. But incredible product when you're done. 
So you can have the, the purple tomatoes in here, and they have um, the, just the strangest colored things, and wonderful carrots that are all different colors, um, the, the beans, the lima beans and all that good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Huh? From the it is. It is. It's actually from New England. So if you think you've got a green thumb, this is a great way to be because uh, certainly experimenting with a lot of these seeds is a good way to go. You can buy them in small packages too, um, just a couple seeds to test, and then you can put in a larger order, and it's much less expensive. It's usually what I do. They have a great catalog. Uh, if every season you, you email them, and they'll send you a hard copy of their catalog with color, and it's really, really great catalog. OK. All right, where do you get your genetics for nursery products? Well, you can get them from other nurseries in Hawaii, which is what most nurseries do. They kind of do this networking thing where they trade products. Uh, so here's a list of the uh, most of the high-quality nurseries in Hawaii that would allow you to sell their product after you propagate it. Planet Hawaii. Uh, has anybody had experience with Planet Hawaii? No. They're good. No. They're for sale, actually. Yeah. But there's nobody else really doing what they're doing. And if a young face came in there with the right marketing skills, uh, could really turn that company around. So for a business plan, if you wanted to do a, um, a restructuring plan for Planet Hawaii, maybe it might be worth your while knowing that it is for sale to do a business plan. To pick. Hmm? You don't want to restrict those panels, eh? Oh, probably not. <laughs> Who did? Recently? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have a TV. I didn't know. <laughs> but anyway, so there's a list of nurseries. Um, there's a. It just keeps going. It's a nice big long list. Okay. So maybe you want to contact any one of these and uh, go check out their products and get their rules and regulations as far as propagating them and maybe come up with a plan for them. This is Frankie's Nursery. This is, this is on Oahu. Um, I'm only referencing Frankie's because he's over in Waimanalo and easily the best um, tropical fruit orchard I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he has the rarest plants. Uh, he has some really, really good cuttings. He does uh, air layering and, uh, and all the grafting and comes up with a really, really nice product that he's able to ship over to you uh, on Big Island. So I would strongly recommend if you want to get involved in fruit trees, uh, what, no, what, no matter what kind, Get a hold of Frankie and maybe go visit his farm, uh, and he might be able to send you over some great pink lemons. Or uh, he has a white seedless guava. It's awesome. <laughs> you just bite it into it, eat the whole thing, and there's no seeds, no problem. Okay, so talk to him. He has no problem with you selling his products as long as you buy them from him. Okay, we're gonna skip the activity because we got 45 minutes late. But what I was uh, Basically, what I did was a precursor to the assignment um, last class. We're going to skip over this, like I said. But basically, what I had the group do was um, to get into groups, sit at the computers, and come up with uh, a, a, a product based upon an assignment. So I'd say biofuels for your group or uh, nursery trees for your group. And then maybe just for about a half hour, 45 minutes, we had got together and um, come up with a plan that kind of looks similar to answer the questions that are on the checklist to show me that you're thinking in the right direction, and then go ahead and do the homework. We're going to skip over that. You're going to do all this in the homework anyway, so I'm confident you'll be able to, to do that. We, we still got to go uh, do a couple things. So, Friendly's aquaponics, so we're not going there. Uh, I don't know what this is. OK, so for next class, uh, of course, read your assignment, uh, especially with that book that I gave you. Um, maybe the IPM stuff is really important for the next class. You guys aren't doing the reading, so I'm just talking into the air. So, um, <laughs> But please, do some readings. But if nothing else, you've got to read the handouts that I gave you for the next class, OK? You will be so lost <laughs> if you do not read those, at least that one I told you to read, OK? So, um, and then of course, bring your insects and bring your plants. That will meet the requirement for assignment three and assignment four. That'll give you all of your check marks and you'll be all set, okay? 
Um, I got to come up with a question for the absentee people. Hmm. Let's think. I want them to. All right. Resource management. Um. All right, for the folks that have been here, I want you to give me a one page single spaced paper. Uh, typed or two pages handwritten. Um, I want you to write about I want you to write about any one of the uh, products that I had described here. I want you to write about bees. You can write about uh, any one of the 12 fruits that are in the 12 fruit list. Um, you can do uh, native plants. I want you to give me a one-page description on the market for uh, any one of those. It could be as uh, non-specific as biofuels. Um, give me a write-up on biofuels in Hawaii, what the potential market is. Give me some real data. Um, let me know what kind of uh, products are produced as biofuels or what type of products are sold as nursery products. I'll let you do whatever you want, but give me a write-up um, that basically describes one of those um, researching crop sections that I had discussed. Okay? If you have any questions, email me and I'll clarify. Good luck, guys. So you have to write, remember, a two-page thing for the homework and now a one-page uh, because you missed class. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Everything needs to be into me by the uh, beginning of next class. Got it? Good thing you guys showed up today. So we're going to go out to the farm and dig some holes. How's that sound? All right. I'm not going to want to come back, so I'm going to pack up. Um, so take your time, go to the bathroom, and then uh, get your paperwork all together and situated. Be sure that you are bringing out... That sheet I gave you last time, which was the soil survey sh that, has the, uh, that has the form in it. Be sure you bring that with, because we're going to fill that out. And be sure you bring this, uh, this sheet here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, no, wait. We don't need that. Yeah, just be sure you bring that one out. And then be sure you bring this analytical uh, services fees. We'll talk about that as well. OK? Uh, if you can go down to the corner and log out uh, or shut down. Shut down would actually be preferred. Please make sure that you turn the power off on the right corner of the computer after it has been shut down. Yeah. Did you guys learn something today? Okay, good. I didn't have anybody fall asleep on me. Must have been exciting. Did you kill that ca uh, camera? Thanks.